The ideas and content expressed on this podcast are our own and do not reflect the views or opinions of any current or previous employers. Jason, here we are, buddy. Season 2, Episode 2. Awesome. Those are magic numbers right there. <clears throat> um, it's funny, I was, I was driving in this morning and I'm like, should I... You ever see like actors and they'll be like, um, they'll practice their phonetics and they'll be like, <laughs> like I don't even, like my cat went to unique the, New York, yeah, unique, unique New, York. New York, New York. I, I can't even speak. I was like, I was like, hmm, what if I could do that? And I was like, nah, screw it. That's a Ron Burgundy move. Oh, that maybe that's where I saw it. Uh, Ron, that's good. Those, those, uh, his podcast way better than ours. <laughs> no, no. His, uh, first of all, his podcast is fake. That's a character, Jason. We're yeah. real life people. We're characters. We're real life people. We're changing the world, man. The whole world. <laughs> I don't know how many times I got to tell you that. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. So, all right, guys. So today we're going to talk about uh, kind of critical path inspections, uh, when to do them, some things to look for. Uh, it's kind of tough to do on a podcast because really, you know, it's best to follow a list. You know, I can tell you. Any, when I learned construction management, when I first was learning how to, how to do this job, I always had every company I worked for always gave me a list. They say, hey, here's a list of things to look for at this stage of construction. And it was perfect, especially for the guys that really don't have any experience coming into it. Sure. Because as you go through that list, you look and say, well, I don't know what curfing a stud is, or I don't know what this is, or I don't know what that is. And it gives you the opportunity to look it up, to learn, right? You can use those 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 inspection lists as a, as a learning tool, you know, if you're super ambitious and want to be successful. Otherwise... If. If, right. Yeah. Otherwise, just sit in your truck, chuck them all off, put them in a file, and you're done. That will keep you around for a certain amount of time. Yeah, for about a month. <laughs> Eventually, those numbers will start to shake out, and somebody's going to go, what the hell is the problem here? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So anyway, so it's super important that, uh, you know, the the, impression, or the expression I always hear is trust but verify, right? And that's why we do these inspections. In the Army, so, we used to call that check the checker. Check the checker. Yeah, you got it. So um, I used to... I mean, there's always, it's always trust, but verify. that's what I've always heard in, uh, in construction because, you know, you want to trust your contractors. You want to make sure that your trade partners are doing the right thing. They, they tell you they're done. They tell you they did a great job. You got to check. You got to go look. Definitely. Every time. It's one of the most important, uh, aspects of construction management when you are the CM or the construction manager <laughs> or the superintendent or, or whatever. Um, some companies call it a project manager, whatever. It's still the same thing. Well, project management's not, that's a little different. I mean, it. You know, it depends on what part of the project you're managing. Well, That's, you know, it because it, we were just talking um, about the difference. Because some companies, a project manager is more of a finance guy. Uh, they're more involved with sales and true. finance and, and costing the project as opposed to being out there actually building the project. You know, and they both are valuable, both important positions. Um, but I think you were right when you said, you know, it's that experience as a construction manager, managing the trades, managing the actual construction is invaluable. And any project manager that's got that experience, in my opinion, is going to be 10 times the project manager he would have without that experience. You mean like like you? Like me. And, and you. Me. And you. <laughs> like us. Okay, so we're going to be successful? <laughs> Do you have a timeline, like a critical path timeline, where you could expect us to be successful? I think, I, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, keep holding my breath. I keep holding on to hope, man. Um, but no, I, I honestly, I think any PM, if you've got like five years experience as a CM, as a construction manager or superintendent, mm -hmm. and then you go into that uh, um, project management role, I think it's, I think that's invaluable. You know, I think that's the case with all industries, right? If you're the boots on the ground person at some point you understand what it is that you're doing as a company for a living better yeah, yeah. and that way you have more to contribute um i think that what critical path is something that we should talk about a little bit just because okay critical path could probably mean something different to you and to me we can label things in uh, each job at a company critical yeah. um but let's face it when you have any job Figuring out what's critical to your success and to the final product and the profitability and all that stuff, it's it's different for every job. It's You have to figure out what's important first. And mm -hmm. I've seen tons of guys and, and girls, ladies, whatever, 
that I, <laughs> I've seen I've seen You're lots sexist. of people in the in the industry that don't know what's really important. Oh, so you're yeah. receiving oh, yeah, yeah. this just barrage of assignments and requirements and things. And if you try and think about everything all at one time, it's overwhelming. And it you definitely watch people just work themselves right out of their, their happiness and their career and all that stuff. So knowing what's critical in the first place and paying attention to those things, I think is extremely valuable. You know, that reminds me of the expression. And I think we've, we may have even talked about it on this show. Um, you know, where your company is going to give you 12 ounces of shit <laughs> yeah. and a 10 ounce glass right. and you got to figure out what's important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just have to figure out what, because you're going to give you a million things to do yeah. and you're going to have a million assignments. And then like we talked about it in our, I think our first show, like deciding what's most important and mm. what is going to, yes. this is guaranteed. N- number four, if I fail is guaranteed to shut down all operations <laughs> that goes on the critical path. List. That's a, that's, that goes <laughs> under important yeah. and urgent. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So the things that you put down in our uh, in our outline here for today are are all very important parts of building a house. Okay, yeah. and that's you know I'll I'll just go through I guess these these couple of things here. Most important concrete. Okay, maybe not most important. I mean, all these things are important. Well, a good foundation, well, man. Right. Yeah, I good. mean, we're just talking about the nuts and bolts or the bricks and sticks that go into building a house here. Concrete. Mm-hmm framing MEPs that's you know, mechanical electrical plumbing for you uh newbies. newbies yeah you made it to season 2 though i feel like you should be like doing some other research on construction not just if, no, if this, this is, is all you're getting this is the sole source of information for construction <laughs> in the this universe this is 100% man. of your construction this is experience all you need. is all listening you need. to us you're that is that is going to be tough on you you're going to be amazing <laughs> by promotion material right there right <laughs> um all right. Well, let's get into. Uh, so obviously, those are those are critical um, uh, items. Steps. In, yeah, steps in your in your your build schedule. Right. You got to put your foundation in. You got to be, begin framing. You know your mechanical electrical plumbing. Um, you know concealment, whether it's drywall or whatever. Um, then your finished trades, uh, and then turnover. Right. Right. So let's talk about concrete because that's you know that's step one. Right. So the when I have a building that's going in. The very first thing that I do, obviously, you know, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but obviously I'm going to review the plans, make sure they're they're right, make sure my structure and my foundation have the same dimensions. That's super important if it's, a, you know, depending on the project I'm building. Well, it's important no matter what. Um, make sure every option, everything that is supposed to be incorporated into that foundation is actually incorporated into the foundation. So mm-hmm. the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check all my structural options to make sure... The concrete guy, my plans, the owner, we're all on the same page for what's going to go in there before they, they even start digging that foundation. You know, another thing, even before concrete, and it's, it's just a, a highlight here, is that concrete is your first real precise thing. I mean, stake out probably, you know, the engineer telling you where it goes mm-hmm. is, is very critical, obviously, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't guess at something like that. We're guaranteeing that we're going to put that down to the millimeter where it's supposed to go. But when you dig... That's a kind of a raw, rough thing, right? Yeah. If you're a little under or a little over on your dig, that's something that you can deal with. But you start spending thousands of dollars pouring concrete into a hole, you and you're not right. Yeah, man. That is that is super like ruin your day type of stuff. Get a, <laughs> get a foundation poured, and then realize that it's in the wrong spot. Are you dropping Ooh. stuff and bumping I, it in the white? Yeah, I know. I'm making a mess over here. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. So obviously, once that once the concrete forms go in, depending on what you're doing, um, once the shape of that of your footing is in the ground, you need to check it before they put concrete in. Make sure you know what is this shape correct. Mm-hmm. You can check it for you know. I I love the the three four five rule, right? Pythagorean's theory. Pythagorean uh, theorem. Yeah, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but and that's that's one of the when I learned that I was like, this is amazing. Because you can actually check to see if your foundation is square, if your wall is square. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know, you measure out three feet in one direction, five feet in another, and when you connect those two dots, it should be five feet, right? If four. You, what? Three, four, five. Three, four, five. You said it wrong. It's what three out from one corner, four out from another. It should be five feet to connect. That's them. not what I said? No. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I got it written down right here. I didn't even say it right. Let's look it up to make sure. I'm probably tired. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep anyway, going. so that's uh, so three, four, five rule. You know, if you can get that, and you can multiply it out. You know, it could be six, eight, and ten. 
you know, depending on the size of the structure or whatever. But if you're looking to see a, just a quick way to see if a wall is square, pull out your tape measure, your marker, your pencil, whatever, bang out those numbers, three, four, five. If it comes, you know, three foot one direction, four foot in the other, they connect the dots, it's five. You're, you should be pretty good to go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's a Pythagorean theorem. I'm looking right. it up. It's fantastic. It's a great, great thing to have. <laughs> I can't say Pythagorean very well, so I just go three, four, five. Anyway, I should have practiced my, what, what was it? Um, Sally sells seashells. Sea seashore? Anyway. Um, it's anyway, a terrible business, by the way, because you're already at the seashore where shells are free. Right? Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah, the next thing to do, make sure, you know, any rebar you have to be, you know, your stone is correct, your rebar is correct. Um, I got in a huge argument with a contractor, with a, with a trade partner a few years ago because there was no rebar in the, uh, it was a slab on grade town, and there was no rebar in it. I freaked. I was like, well, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But in that particular jurisdiction, it actually wasn't required. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, had, I got into a big old brawl over it because the plans called for it but there was an adjustment to the plans made an exception because that jurisdiction didn't require it hmm. um sounds like a great cost savings just take right out of the foundation yeah just, you no just take yeah no problem <laughs> hopefully the thing stays the up. sarcasm anyway um and then make sure you know once you're, you you know you your your plum your square whatever all your options are in there your design is correct as far as stone rebar etc step downs whatever kind of, of slab you're doing or whatever kind of foundation you're putting in Make sure you have a place for your MEPs, right? Make sure if you have a sleeve in that foundation mm -hmm. to fish electrical conduit through or plumbing conduit or whatever, make sure it's there and in the right place. Um, it's very important because if anybody's ever had to bust up concrete, it is not fun. It's not yeah, a good yeah. job. And when you got to be the one to say, hey, <laughs> I put that in the wrong place, I need you to get there and bust it up, you're either going to pay them through the nose to do it, um, or, I mean, at a minimum, they're going to they're gonna be upset with you. Yeah, I mean, you can. There's stuff that you can double back on and do later, but obviously, you know, we get underneath or through concrete. It's going to be costly. Yeah, it man. can be, you know, dangerous at times. So, sure, you're definitely going to want to get in and check those things. Check your groundwork plumbing before you pour that slab so that you're not breaking up a huge section and spending thousands of dollars to repair something that's not going to look good at the end. So let's, let's back that up just a little bit, just in case somebody doesn't know. So basically what happens, we're going to dig a hole, we're going to step it back so it's safe. Mm -hmm. um, this, will all, this will all go in the, uh, uh, we'll expand on all this on, in, the, in the show notes or the mm -hmm. blog. Um, anyway, we're going to dig the hole, we're going to form the footing, we're going to pour the footing, we're going to put our walls in, we're, then we're going to do our underground plumbing before we pour our, our concrete floors, which is mm -hmm. what Jason was just talking about. Before the floor is going, you need to get in there with your plans. Make sure all your plumbing is in the right place. If you're supposed to have, you know, some pump or you've got some standpipes or you've got water lines, whatever, you know, your your waste lines, make sure they're all in the right place before you cover it with four to eight to 12 inches of concrete, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you'll save a lot of time and money by doing that. Anyway, so, all right, so our concrete's in place. Boom. What's next, Jason? Uh, concrete's in place. The next thing we're going to do is... Well, obviously, backfill, get your grade ready on the yeah. outside, but the next big step is framing. Framing. I love it. <clears throat> so, um, again, you know, the process almost repeats itself as far as as far as far I'm concerned because... Same thing. You know, before your framers start, you want to have a meeting with them, make sure that they understand, you know, everything that's going into the house, all the options, whatever your customer is looking for, it's included. The framer knows it. Then they start framing. You know, there's a bunch of different kinds of framing. There's panelization. There's stick framing. Um, you know, there's wood studs, there's metal studs, you know, it all depends on the kind of construction that you're getting into, um, for what you're doing. But bottom line is these, these general principles stay the same. So let's say the structure's framed, it's up there. First thing you want to go do, make sure everything you discussed, all those options, uh, are included. Then make sure nothing was missed because here's what's going to happen. Your MEPs, mechanical electrical plumbing, are going to go in there. And they're going to start installing their equipment, you know, based on the structure that's standing there. And you don't want to have to go in and tear stuff out because there's an option missing or slow the whole process down because something got missed. Anyway, so first thing you do, check your options. Mm -hmm. Second thing, you need to make sure that sucker is structurally uh, sound per the plans. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're looking for bearing points. You're looking for posts. You're looking for beams. You want to make sure if it's supposed to be there to hold that structure up, it's there. It didn't mm -hmm. get missed. It's the right size. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, when you're checking your concrete, 
because you're about to start framing, usually the first part is beams. So, you know, yep. steel or lambs or whatever you're using. Yep. So you're going to make sure you got the right steel, the right distance between beam pockets or posts or whatever your columns are going. And then when you start to put it together, you should be in contact with your framer so that if he runs into a post or a beam or a whatever issue on the first floor, you can continue on to the second floor. I mean, probably one of the things that we, don't, we haven't really talked about is the fact that your schedule is so crucial, like your timeline is so crucial in production building of any yeah. kind, that a problem is always fixable. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. You can always demolish it and start over, okay? <laughs> but, you know, we're building from the ground up, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're talking about a piece of dirt that is eventually going to be a structure. Yeah. But it costs a lot of money. Yes, sir. And it kills your timeline. Yep. And sometimes those two things are even more critical path than Absolutely. some of these other things. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, you might be missing a sunroom, which you could put right on that house. You could dig it back up. You could pour footing next to it. You can you can cut it all in. But if it's sitting there and it's killing your timeline, it's you're not going to win. For sure. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we've looked for our, our critical structure, you know, our beams, mm -hmm. our posts, things like that, point loads, etc. Um and you got to, again, make sure it's plumb and square. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to do is build some beautiful building and none of the walls are straight. Because um, I promise you, your customers will pick that out. Um, <clears throat> so again, three, four, five. Yeah, make sure your walls are straight. Right. Put a level on them. Six foot, eight yeah. foot, whatever you got. And know your critical spots in the house, too, that are going to cause problems. Um, do you know the best way to find out if everything is... It, you have this in here. Everything in the right place for finishes, trims, and door, trim and doors. Yeah. The best way to figure out if it is, is to get into your house at different stages with a tape measure and a set of plans yeah, and man. a level and do a thorough frame check. We are trusting, but we're verifying. We're checking the checker. We're going to call it whatever we want. But get in there and make sure that the, thing, the product that you're representing is set up for the next phase. When you order very expensive cabinets or appliances or you know, certain square footage of tile or whatever the case may be, you're putting tons of money into this project. If you make sure that it's going to fit before it gets here, <laughs> you're going to be more likely to be successful. I'll give you, I'll give you a little, a little trick, a little hack I came up with years ago. Um, long time ago, actually, I hate to even say how long ago. Um, I mean, I'm getting old. Anyway, I would take, um, my, my levels, four foot, six foot level. Mm -hmm. And I marked on them oh, with yeah. a permanent marker, definitely critical dimensions for mm -hmm. things. Um, just a quick check. Just a quick check. So, I mean, for door sizes, window sizes, and um, trim sizes, you know, depending on the project. I, I did I built a project a long time ago, and the trim we put in there was so was this thick colonial coxcomb trim. Um, and after we built the first structure, we had a lot of problems with outlets and things being mm -hmm. in the trim. So I marked it on my, my level. So I would go in there, and I could easily just stick it on a door jam, make sure the door was the right, the right dimensions. door size mm -hmm. for that opening. And then I also had the trim marked on there, so I would just slide the level over and make sure nothing was in the way that um, of the trim the door. Awesome. Yeah, dude, just made for a real quick little little hack, and you can do that with all kinds of stuff: windows, doors, trim, whatever. Um, I even did it with um, outlets because at the time we were putting the, the base was so tall; it was like twelve inches of base. It was crazy, um, and we would put the outlets in the base. So I actually marked that as well, so I could just put it on the ground next to an hmm. outlet, and I knew if it was in the right place or not. That's awesome. Um, just made it quicker. Anyway, so. So we're good. You know, we've checked our doors, our windows. Everything's plumbing square. So again, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. They come in prior to concealment. So you should really be doing a frame check twice. You should do, well, you should do a frame check as soon as the framer's done. Make sure everything's good for the rest of the contractors. Then when everybody's done before concealment, before insulation, you go back into that house uh, or building or whatever it happens to be. And you make sure your MEPs, again, you're checking your options. If it's supposed to be there, make sure it's there. Check your paperwork. Make sure everything matches. Little check marks, whatever you want to do. Highlight it, it doesn't matter. Um, make sure everything's in the right place for your finishes. Jason and I were just talking about that. You got to make sure you're not going into a, a structure after you've trimmed it and ripping walls down because all of a sudden you got a return that's in the middle of a door or you know in the trim or, mm -hmm. or whatever. That's very important. Make sure all your pipes, your ducts are secured and sealed. Dude, I can't tell you how many times I've walked over. I'll grab plumbing pipes, and I used to do this when I was doing frame tracks all the time. And I would just grab a hold of the water lines and yank on them just to make sure they're <laughs> glued, you know, because 
Because if you've been doing this for any amount of time, you fired up one of those, and oh, one of those yeah, fittings man. busted loose. There's nothing like... Per- it held through its plumbing inspection until you charged that sucker with water with oh, a water meter. God. I'm telling you, dude, there's nothing worse than, Ugh. you know, you're in a you know a house or a building that you've built with the owner, and water's coming through the ceiling because you didn't buy... <laughs> it's never happened to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you want to make sure if it's supposed to be glued, screwed, or nailed, or whatever, it is. Yank on it, tug on it, make sure all your pipes are sealed, your ducts are sealed. Um, you know, years ago I did, uh, I got called into a house, it was a long time ago, um, because they were complaining that, uh, it wasn't in, it was, I was doing an energy star inspection, it was a long time ago, and, uh, the house wasn't, they weren't getting the, the ductwork was supposed to be below, I forget what the, I'll, I'll say 25%, but it was lower than that, I don't remember what it was exactly. Like a door blast test or something? So I did a duct blaster test duct on blast? it. And and I was wasn't getting it, and the contractor was like, "You're doing it wrong, blah blah blah," and give me all this grief about it. And I was like, "Oh really?" So I carried smoke sticks with me, big ones, because <laughs> I would do big structures, multi-family mm-hmm. stuff. And I was like, "Oh okay, I'm wrong, okay." So I turned on the stuck blast when I dropped this smoke bomb right in front of the fan because it sucks air into mm-hmm. it, pressurizes it. Whole house filled with smoke. It was coming out of it was coming out of everything. And I'm just looking at the guy, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, who's doing it wrong now, right? buddy?" And he's just like, "Oh my, you know." So, but he literally had to remove. It was a two-zone house. It was down. Mm. They had to pull both the units out because it was leaking behind him, and they had already pre-rocked. They were so confident in their work, they pre-rocked pre-rocked the uh, the mechanical rooms. Mm. So they had to yank everything out, fix everything, put it all back. But I was like, "Yay me! I'm so smart." Anyway, I'm sure he loves you to this day. I still actually keep in touch with that dude. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It, you know, it's one thing to get into an argument on the job site, but you got to make peace, right? Thick uh, skin and short memories. You got it, man. So anyway, you also need to make sure all your nail plates are up, your stud boots are in place. You want to make sure that the trim carpenters and the drywall car, uh, what do you contractor, mean? contractor, I guess, are not going to come in and put nails and holes through your mechanical electrical plumbing lines. So, I mean, obviously your county, your city, your state representative inspector is going to come and look at this stuff as well, but need to make sure everything is protected behind the walls so that you don't have to come back, you know, you're not going to come back to a flood, electrical fire, you know, whatever. I think you just said something crucial there that's, you you might expect that those things should be caught by the inspector. Uh, yeah. Um, but once again, people make mistakes. Yeah, man, they're only human. The inspector is going to go home and put his feet up and not think about your community. <laughs> and he's he's not going to worry about if he missed a nail plate. But you have to worry about that because yeah. if somebody nails into their, you know, into an a, you know, electric line or a gas line or something silly, like that's that could be a really big problem. Dude, we had a yeah, uh, could building, ruin your timeline. I was building a uh, apartment building a long time ago. Everything seems to be a long time ago. I don't make any mistakes anymore. Yeah, you haven't done anything recently. I, I haven't made any mistakes in years. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I, I had a shelving contractor go into a closet, right? It was bottom floor. It was like mm-hmm. six floors, something like that. Um, and he drove a nail right into a sprinkler line. Ooh. The nail fired out of the wall from the pressure. So he nailed it in, and it immediately shot right ar- across the room oh and hit girl. the wall behind him. And water started coming out. So with a sprinkler system in a, in a commercial building like that, oh, so. you have to drain the entire system down. So this was like a six, you know, five or six story apartment building. Um, and we were on the bottom floor and the guy grabbed a tube of caulk. So funny. And he jams it into the hole and he calls me. He's like, oh, damn, you got to get down I'm here. I'm stuck here with it. So I go running down there like, what's up? And he's like, I hit the sprinkler. Down. I was like, what are you talking about? And he pulls the caulk tube out and water shooting out. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> So, you know, we ended up having to uh, drain the... We shut the whole system down because obviously it's just going to keep going. Drained the entire system down. Dude, it ate up It ate up a lot of time. Um, and then we got to argue about whose fault it was. Mm. So, But honestly, that pipe should have been protected. It was in the middle yeah. of a stud bay. Um, you know, we just That's weren't thinking... One, man. Yeah, we weren't thinking about shelves. But anyway, I digress. I can tell stories all day long. Um uh, Where are we at? Okay. MEP so, trims. Okay, so the other thing, you know, make sure your MEPs are installed neat and orderly. You know, you get that, that newbie uh, MEP installer, 
doesn't quite know what he's doing, or maybe that plumber's pissed off today and he doesn't necessarily want to run his pipes inside the wall, <laughs> which I've seen, unfortunately. Yes. I just need to make sure everything looks good because here's the thing. Your, your, your customer's going to come through that property before you conceal it, typically, and you want everything to look on purpose. Um, I, when I was doing home inspections years ago, I would always pull the, um, the uh, electrical panel. When I would go into a home, I'd pull the panel down, I'd look at it, and you could always tell. Did Harry homeowner do this or did a professional do it? Uh, and sometimes I hate to say it, man, you can't tell the difference. So yeah, I, you know, I, I was going to say that look like it's intentional yeah, is, a, is a good way to describe it because that means that things are kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, dress, right dress. You've got, you know, lines run together, yeah, man. zip tied together, going around the corner in the same fashion. Dude, it makes all the, I mean, impre- first impressions are everything, right? So when somebody comes yeah, in and know, sees it, I went I went and saw some construction at a couple of different places and one of the things I noticed was you know in this other in this other state they they were running all of their electrical gas all their stuff in the basements underneath the joists oh, rather than on. rather than trying to stay in a joist bay or up against the wall where there's a bulkhead and you know that you're saving on 10 feet of wire or gas line or whatever but Man, there's drop ceilings in all of those places, and not to mention what we just said. It didn't look intentional, man. There's stuff going, you know, it's northeast to southwest, and there's it's stuff the worst, going man. north south, and yep. and it looks like cra- it looks like cra- it looks like there wasn't pl- it wasn't planned. It was done by you, you, know, know, you know what that is. That's that, you're right. That's no planning. That right. means that whoever's running that project isn't giving any consideration to the future, finishing that space later. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I would judge you if you built my house that way. I'd probably not I'd let it happen you. in the first oh, place. But... I'd stop you. I'd be like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> um, although, I feel like I can't tell if I would be a good customer or a bad customer. I, feel I, like... I built a house with, with the company I work for, and another construction manager built it. And I remember specific. It was a long time ago. I, I, I remember specifically being like, I'm going to be that cool homeowner. That's going to lay <laughs> off and I'm not going to push, but for these couple of little things and now I wish I'd have paid closer attention. <laughs> oh man, it's the worst. It's just what? a couple of little cosmetic Stop. things that drive me crazy, but. Dude, sometimes you got to be an asshole. Yeah, There's, you know. I mean, you got to. They did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm not complaining. Do they still work for that company? No, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should have done a better job. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, so. Uh, everything's neat and orderly. We're good to go. So you also need to make sure, check for framing damage that was done by your uh, mechanical contractors. Mm-hmm. There always is. There's nothing worse than that. Uh, I hate to pick on HVAC guys, but they love to, to cut holes with a chainsaw. <laughs> um, although I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm sure there's still guys out there using the chainsaw. Um, you just got to make sure of any damage that was done, you bring it to the framer, have them fix it, then you can conceal. Insulate and conceal, obviously. Um so here's the next thing. So kind of the next phase, I and mean, we can talk about insulation, but we're going to talk about that with our building science um, podcast, um, which is coming up. Uh, this little plug. Is that what they right. call it? Is that a plug? Is that a plug? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, so then you got to look at your finish quality, right? Drywall guys come in. You, know, you want to make sure that they're doing a good job because that is what your customer is going to judge you on. You know, 90%. They're going to come in. They're going to look at the walls. If the walls look good, the job looks good. So you want to make sure your drywall is good, all the nails. A lot of jurisdictions require um, drywall to actually be structural. So you need to make mm-hmm. sure they follow those nailing, those patterns. nailing patterns or screw, screw patterns, patterns, whatever they're using, whatever it's called for. Um, you know, they're going to paint. You know, you want to make sure you understand their scope of work. Because if they're supposed to spray and back roll, you want to make sure you get a spray and a back roll. Mm-hmm. Because it, it's a different product. It's a different product and the quality of the paint and drywall is going to be uh, drastically different based on the how you've contracted them. It's all different level of drywall finish. There's all different level of paint finish, the thickness of the paint, all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you want to get really uppity with your uh, contractor, take a sample of the drywall and paint. When it's done, have it tested. <laughs> That's for extreme cases. Although some some owners and some commercial projects require it. I haven't had to go there. I have done a couple But, times. you know, I have had the question about damage during construction quite a bit, even recently. What do you mean? Just, you know, people just having an unrealistic expectation about how this puzzle is put together. Mm. You know, I, there, I always use the analogy that if you'd like to see 
the cake being baked, you're going to see a couple of broken mm -hmm. eggs. Like, yeah. it's just what it takes to do. We're putting things together by hand. Some people are unreasonable with their expectation on how the degree of error is or how, you know, how, like you said, sometimes you go in and you see a stud that needs to be replaced, you replace it, you know? Sometimes it's... You know, you can do it before you put the house up if you're yeah. stick building. But when you're not, when you're panelized building, a lot of that stuff comes out and we have to crane it into place or yeah. or forklift it into place. So, I don't know. I think that's just a little caveat there. Yeah, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's it part, it's part of your process here. You want to make sure that those things are done before you move on to the next stage. Oh, I got you. You can't, yeah, you can't, you're right, you're right. You can't leave damaged things in there and then run all your MEPs and your house wrap or your roof all through it and then, ha oh, crap, I got a roof on, but I still have a big hole in the plywood. You there. know, we didn't talk about roofing. That's important, too. Is it? Yeah. Is that critical? <laughs> it's critical. We do want water to run off of the house uh, while we're yeah, building it. Yeah, yeah, we forgot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, talking big but picture. you know that's but you're you're absolutely right. But, but I think if you follow all those steps, man, you'll have. Um, because I always tell customers, listen, don't don't come by this project every day. Mm -hmm. You're gonna drive yourself crazy. You know it's gonna be dirty. It's gonna be messy. Mm -hmm. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna get it right. But if you're here every day, you might as well be running the job. Right. right? You don't even need me. Um, except for my the fact that I think I've said I haven't made a mistake in years. Cause yeah, of course. Um, we're practically perfect. But. You know, because it'll drive you crazy. If you're not familiar with construction yeah, and you yeah. go to a job site every day, it'll drive you. Be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But people don't realize is buildings. They're still built by man, two hands <laughs> and tools. Yeah, right. and we have a lot of automated stuff, but it's still done by people. It's still done by people, and that's not. Um, it's not pretty sometimes. So you got to you got to kind of uh, kind of go with the flow. Yeah. I will tell you though, dude. I got, I recently got into an argument with a guy. I feel like I start a lot of stories that way. But I, I got into a, an argument with a guy. Not recently. Usually it's a long time ago. Well, no, this was recent. Because there's a lot of companies out there that are doing, um, they're taking panelization to the next level. And they're doing um, component houses. So, like, they'll ship a whole building in, like, I'm going to exaggerate. Of like, sections. So, they'll bring a whole wall section out. It's got everything in it already. Mm -hmm. And they're just assembling it like a puzzle. Um, and they're like, oh, this is so much better, blah, blah, blah. But what you don't realize is, A, the cost is astronomical mm -hmm. and b the mess is still there but it's in their warehouse instead of on that's, site that's really true and uh it, it drives me crazy because i'm just like yeah we I, you know i spent some time doing cost estimate for one of these companies and i mean i will tell you the the quality is amazing well, i'm sure it is the quality is is it's amazing but so that's the price. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down on that because I'm sure if they, um, I can name a couple of companies that I was arguing with and I don't want to, uh, <laughs> I want to get all butt hurt. You want to so... sum up critical path here with some of our major structural things? Uh, sure. Hit it. All right. So like we said, um, the things that are going to keep your project moving, we're going to make sure that your large foundation items are planned and installed properly before moving to the next phase. Um, framing, getting to you know would be the next thing after all your concrete is done and then we're going to check at during the framing process planning for your uh, mechanicals and then again after all that stuff is installed planning yep. on the fine carpentry and the trim and the bathrooms and making sure you have clearance um and then you know we touched a little bit on managing expectations along the process too with customers or architects or managers um you know, checking the checker, making sure that all those things, if you know your one guy who comes to inspect you every Thursday to see how you're doing is a freak about making sure that your electrical sockets are plumb and square or whatever, maybe that's something that you'd give a little bit extra time to. You have to figure out what's important and focus on those things so you can keep your whole project moving. You got it, man. It's awesome. So, all right, guys, that's it. We went a little long today i think we're over 30 minutes uh, some of it was trash you can cut it out yeah I just that. it's like everybody knows i don't edit nothing um anyway, anyway um check us out on instagram we're super active check us out on facebook check out the website send us questions comments to info at construction management podcast.com 
Um, we have some big news coming. I'm not going to spoil it, but we have some big changes coming up. I know I, we, I said that last time. We really haven't changed anything, <laughs> but I guarantee you, we've got some we've got some big stuff coming down. The Maybe road. before season three. It's hard to say. Maybe I don't know. We're trying to keep you. We got to have a hook. <laughs> got to keep you somehow. Anyway, uh, thanks again for the support. Keep all the comments and questions coming. We love it, and we will uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much.